Alright guys, welcome back to another video. So today, I'm actually taking you inside of part of my home office where I do a lot of my video editing for videos and well, it's actually a home office slash game room for me because um, in the past I've played on my consoles, PC, and also um, do virtual reality in this space. So it's not all fixed up or anything. That's why I'm just showing a portion. Pretty much the messy side is over there. And I'm just gonna kind of give you um, just a, a small tour of, you know, the working side of the room. So we will start over here on, I guess on my left here. All right, so we're gonna start right here to the right, and then we're gonna work our way around to the left. So this here is my Western Digital MyCloud PR4100 NAS. Um, this is how, this is basically my Plex server station. So all of my home movies that I have, and TV shows and so on and so forth, are uh, on this device. Um, I believe it had it came with 32 terabytes of storage. The working storage due to the RAID configuration that I chose is about 24 terabytes. And it's pretty much almost full. I think I only have like five terabytes left. Here to the left of that, um, I have this Linksys. Um, I want to, it's basically one of their mesh wireless systems. And this is the most recent one I purchased. I actually purchased the top of the line one, the one that costs about a thousand dollars and I even bought two of them to try to cover this home as far as Wi-Fi and unfortunately it didn't work out um, well for me so I ended up having to take that back uh, my theory is I don't have enough newer devices to take advantage of the Wi-Fi 6 um, higher speeds um, and that particular device I believe only supports like 65 wireless devices I may have more than that so this particular setup here um, supports 95 wireless devices and so far you know we're getting pretty good coverage with that down below that you have the tp link this is one of my ethernet splitters and it's sending cables all throughout the house so that i can connect my multiple devices obviously i have my router for my internet and then up here um, this is usually where i would have my VR headsets and such displayed, but I haven't been using those very much. So um, I just kind of threw these, um, there's some movies and DVDs and, and software up there um, that I have. Now over here to the left, I have, well, let's start at the bottom. Here's my, this is my uh, PC, my one of my older PCs that I built. It actually consists of, it has a total of four um, drives in it. One of them is a Blu-ray drive, a Blu-ray writing drive. All the rest of them are DVD writing drives. It's a, it's an old box, but I've redone the guts a couple of times. I actually have a GTX 1070 in here and it has Intel 6700K, I believe. So this is a box that cannot be upgraded to Windows 11. I want to say it has like 32 gigabytes of RAM, something like that. And then attached to that, I uh, for video editing, I use this uh, DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor keyboard. Now this I kind of move around from device to device. Sometimes I'll use it with my laptop. And sometimes I'll use it, um, you know, with the desktop. Um, behind that, I have my Astro. I believe these are the eight. Yeah, these are the A fifties. I will use that, you know, with my PC and then also use it with my Xbox. And next to that, I've got this uh, Elgato uh, microphone that I purchased not too long ago. I'm still kind of getting used to it. Um, I bought that as a microphone that I can use both at the desktop setting and then also I can use it with my laptop if needed. Over here, I've got a wide, ultra wide uh, LG monitor. It's an older one. Um, and it serves a purpose. It's, it's uh, I think it's what, 25 something by whatever that other aspect ratio is. Um, but that's that. Um, right here, to the left of that, I have my Corsair. I wanna say this is the K50 or whatever. Let's look on the back and see what it says. K70. So this is the K70 gaming keyboard. 
Um, it's got the whole RBG lighting thing where you can actually change the colors. And then you also have, um, I have some Logitech uh, speakers with the subwoofer underneath down there. Um, so this is, you know, uh, this is basically like my secondary desktop because I did uh, since upgrade um, in the, uh, I did since upgrade my, my computer. Moving to the left, right over here in the corner. See if we can get in there a little bit closer. All right, this right here is my latest NAS purchase. It is a Synology. It's an eight bay NAS. I did upgrade this. It's, I believe it's up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. It has the NVMe so that it has the faster caching. I wanna say, I can't remember the exact number offhand, but whatever the max that this particular Synology can support, um, I put that in there. Um, it does have the 10 gigabit switch. And um, on top, I have a QNAP um, switch that is a 10 gigabit enabled switch. And it actually has a total, I wanna say four 10 gigabit switches, and then it has um, four or so, uh, actually it has eight regular one gigabit switches. So I'm using that with my main desktop right now. Um, I have not put a, um, I haven't put a one of those uh, 10 gigabit uh, PCIe cards in this in this computer as of yet, simply because I have all the PCIe lanes filled up on this computer because I was using it um, for virtual reality. But I may um, retrofit that so that this computer can actually get the 10 gigabit connection as well as my main computer. So as I said, Synology, whatever back there, I just have a DJI gimbal. Doesn't work quite as well anymore since they've kind of moved on to the newer ones, but I have not let it go as of yet. Right here, I have my Astro A50s connected to my, uh, my main PC. These are the P, uh, PlayStation version of the device. And then back behind here, this, I'm gonna do a review over this. It's covered in dust right now. But this is the Caesar uh, book scanner. It, I actually bought this when I bought my, uh, I bought a Surface Go version one. And back when Edge had the ability to, you know, uh, you could actually, uh, it could read PDFs. I think it still has that functionality, but it's not as um, fleshed out as it was before. So with a device like this, you could actually buy a book from say the thrift store and you could actually scan the book and digitize it. And if you have the kind of software, whether it be like um, Adobe Acrobat or something like that, you can actually um, turn that book into a, a editable PDF, which also kind of converts it to where it could be read by a screen reader. So this is a good way to actually get into, um, like if you're not a, the most avid reader, you can actually organize things to where they could be read to you very similar to like audible um, also too if you just didn't want to have a whole bunch of books around the house you could actually use a device like this to put all of your books um, in a digital format so they'll be on your so if you bought books from the library if you bought brand new books you could scan them put them on your your um, laptop put them on your your smartphone or whatever and you can actually uh, read those things on the go. It can also work with obviously articles and so on and so forth. So that's the Caesar book scanner and I'll actually um, you know do like a little bit of a mini review on that um, in the future. All right so let's start over here. I have um, two 4k monitors. They're both LGs. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on the specs or anything like that but basically I bought these just because I wanted a 4k uh, 4k monitors to be able to you know game in and also to be able to edit video in so on and so forth um, to the top there I have uh, two webcams one of them is the Logitech I want to say one of these is like the C20 or C something and the other one is the Logitech 4k webcam and then to the left here this is actually my HTC Vive wireless adapters, kind of like a, 
I don't know, I think it works off of some kind of light technology or whatever. So when I'm hooked up to VR, I don't actually have to be wired into my computer for it to track or anything like that. So that's a pretty nice feature. I haven't used it in a while. It actually has a PCIe card in the back of my, in the back of the PC. Here I have one of the, um, this is the Corsair gaming mouse. It's got 2.4 gigahertz and it's also, this is the Dark Core RBGE SE version. Um, it's, it's a decent mouse. I have the other one, the one that's actually for the charging. I don't know if this is the one for the charging pad or if the other one is, but one of these quit working on me. And I had them about the same amount of time, so I don't know what the deal is. Now this is my main editing station. This is the DaVinci, this is the DaVinci Resolve speed editor keyboard. It's the full keyboard layout, so I don't have to have, you know, as you look over here, you see I have to have an actual keyboard and then I actually have to have the speed editor to the side. This has slightly different functions than the actual keyboard, but a lot of it is the same. There's just certain things that are a little bit different. This is um, primarily for working in the cut page on DaVinci Resolve, which as I get more proficient, I'm actually gonna share some videos about my personal experiences with DaVinci Resolve. Now, coming back over here, this right here, I, I really enjoy this keyboard. The only thing that I'm not too fond about is it's not backlit. So, um, and the keys are obviously a different size as, a, as opposed to um, this particular keyboard here, the KS70. I, I type a lot better on this keyboard than I do on the DaVinci Resolve keyboard, but that's just gonna be a muscle memory thing. This keyboard offers so much functionality and I will kind of give an overview of this in a future video. Now, moving on from there, I've got my Blue Yeti microphone. This is why I got the Elgato because this is kind of a fixed microphone and it's a little bit heavier and bulkier than the Elgato, so I don't wanna um, be carrying that around and trying to use that on a laptop. I've got it hooked to a boom arm connected to the one of those Elgato stands and it works pretty decently or whatever. I just have this uh, inexpensive desing chair here, my little kind of like, I guess, gaming chair. It's all right. I, I've not had a very, I haven't had a high quality chair, so I don't know what's good and what's bad. Now, coming back, let's see, there was something I wanted to say over here. Oh yeah, this is a Corsair mouse. It's got the, uh, it's a gaming mouse. It's got uh, nine, what is that? 12 buttons on the side. It's got your roller and, you know, it's a decent mouse or whatever. That's what, I had before I bought the two wireless mi mice that I have and I had to go back to that one because obviously the other one failed. Moving along. All right. Now, the, the big computer here. This here is my newest PC build. It is a... Uh, well, first and foremost, let me just say all the desktops in my home, I built myself. I installed Windows, I built them from the ground up. This here has a Blu-ray drive in the front, Blu-ray burning drive. It's only got the single drive. This computer used to have a liquid cooling, uh, one of those all-in-one coolers, but it failed on me. So I have since moved on to the, um, let's turn it to the side here so you can kind of see it a little bit. All right, so you can see just a bit there. So this has an AMD Ryzen thread. Uh, this is a Wraith Ripper cooler. Um, it's pretty cool cooler, it's pretty quiet. And that is cooling my AMD thread ripper. It is a 29, uh, is it a 2990? Yeah, 2990 WX workstation um, processor. That is 32 cores and uh, 64 threads. It has a 1200 watt power, Corsair, I believe, power uh, supply. It's got a Jedi Order Titan GPU. Um, I also have the Elgato 4K capture card inside of this particular setup. 
It has the NVMe drives, it has SSD drives, as well as regular hard drives. This computer is fitted with 64 gigabytes of RAM. And obviously it has the um, 10 gigabit ethernet so that it can actually connect to the actual QNAP over there. And so I can edit directly off of my Synology there with this particular PC setup. So it's super nice as far as I don't have to keep loading up my computer, which is one of the reasons why I was having a lot of problems before, because I was moving stuff from one hard drive to the next. I've got multiple um, external drives around here, and it just became, I have multiple external drives here, and it just became difficult trying to manage all of those different drives. And then obviously I've learned that you can overload USB um, ports by plugging too many devices into them. So this gives me the ability to kind of minimize that. And then obviously, you know, I have, you know, my Synology now so I can kind of build out and just continue to store um, more uh, data, whatever I need to store on that. Um, I have another Logitech uh, sound system or speaker system with this particular, with the subwoofer on the bottom. And that is, this is my main editing station, even though um, I do edit quite a bit on the go, I will use my, my, I have an M1 MacBook, which is a lot more convenient than using this station because I have to sit here. Now, one of the things, um, well, let's move on. So coming over here, I don't really have much here. Sometimes I'll put my laptops here. But I also have it set up to where, like, if I wanted to do product reviews, uh, as you can see here, I have um, two Elgato ring lights. I have an Elgato key light all wired up. It's got the camera mount right here. Um, it's a remote control car from, I bought that, oh my gosh, probably, probably about 20 years ago. It still works and uh, I painted the body and did all that and then coming over here you no know, I used to eat popcorn but no more so and then this here is a 4k Samsung TV inexpensive I think when I purchased it it only cost like around five hundred dollars or something like that so um, I did not uh, it doesn't have HDR doesn't have a high refresh rate doesn't have um, what is that uh, HDMI 2.1 so it does not support the features that are available on the more modern gaming consoles um, I used to have it mounted to the wall up here but I, I took it down I can't remember why but basically I took it down and I don't know if I'll remount it or what I'm going to do but this is basically an overview of my part of my office so just giving a little pan so again we started over here on this side and then we just kind of worked our way around and as I said this is the clean side and you know like anything there's a clean side and a dirty side so this is a clean side I was thinking about getting another you know one of these inexpensive gaming chairs so that I can you know move from one chair to the next I thought it'd be kind of cool to get a white one maybe but then it probably look pretty filthy after a while but it, it would be cool at, at least initially okay so you may be wondering why am I showing all of this stuff in my office or giving this little review of my office a lot of my videos are based down in the garage shop and doing woodworking things to be quite honest stuff like this is what actually helped push me down into the garage shop um, one of those reasons being the fact that um, if you look, you know, there's not a lot of custom stuff here. Like the messy side of the room is over there. And so there's a lot of things that I wanted to kind of organize and configure. And I think it would be nice to have like, you know, whether it be custom cabinetry or different things to be able to put your electronic devices in so that they don't get damaged. But then also too, so everything is not stuck in a tub. Um, so that's one of the things that kind of moved me in the direction of doing some more, you know, woodworking DIY. And the other thing is, as I've spoken before, um, 
I don't play games all the time. I do play games. I've invested a lot of money into, you know, video games and different things like that. Um, but it's not the primary focus for me. But every now and then, you know, a person needs to have their downtime, and that's what, um, you know, this room serves dual purpose. It gives me the opportunity to have that downtime. Whether I want to, you know, I used to play Battlefield Four um, quite a bit. Um, I haven't played the new one. I may pick that up. You know, I heard it's not that good, but um, Call of Duty, I played a little bit of that. I'm not as familiar with Call of Duty, but I may get into that. Um, but anyways, I've had some upgrades to this area and the most recent one is, so this is the LG Ultra Gear gaming monitor let me just set it down it's not super light um i picked this up from best buy yesterday and the reason being is because i'm actually probably going to move away from gaming on this tv and base well let me back up a little bit so when i uh, can't tell if i'm in focus hopefully it is because i'm not recording this over so with my actual gaming setup, let me move the chair out of the way, or rather my main desktop PC. I have had, um, I've had issues where, well, it's not issues, but basically kind of like times where I'm using, say, DaVinci Resolve, and then as I'm going through that workflow, I may want to capture an image from the video to make a, um, a thumbnail and then I'll use a program like Affinity Photo. And so I'm opening up all these different windows or I'll use Audacity to record audio as I'm getting, you know, trying to become more proficient at that. Um, as I'm moving from one thing to another, um, I kind of feel myself wanting to have a third monitor with this setup. Now, in the past, I had plugged in that uh, ultra wide which obviously removed it from that uh, secondary pc and i would have those three monitors here but of course that ultra wide is not 4k and uh, it i just had some kind of jankiness or whatever because the ultra wide is actually uh, based on it's a hdmi technology and these are display port and when i read up on my jedi order um graphics card it basically said that it can support up to three monitors via display port so I have decided to combine two issues together um, recently I was uh, fortunate enough to pick up a uh, PlayStation 5 I did have to buy it in a bundle I got it from GameStop um, I may do a small little video of an unboxing of that just to go over it and I bought an Xbox Series X a while ago, probably almost a year or so ago. And I'll, you know, play the little, the driving sim games on occasion and some other things. But um, I have them here for when I'm, you know, it's too late at night and I'm not able to go down to work in the shop and I don't feel like doing video editing. I have this as an option for something to just kind of do, right? Um, so both of those support HDMI 2.1 neither of these monitors do and obviously the TV here does not so combining these issues I was like I'll get this monitor because this monitor actually has two HDMI 2.1 ports it has a hundred and forty four gigabyte uh, oh no no sorry 144 megahertz supported so it's got the fast re fast refresh rate it's a 27 inch monitor it does support nvidia g-sync and also uh it's a one millisecond ips display it's got hdr and i guess it's got 600 nits of brightness or something like that so um it, it does support a vest amount or visa mount and you know it's kind of got the little rbg whatever the case may be now i picked this up because well I looked at the Sony monitor and on Best Buy site it, it really only had like a 3.3 stars and being that that's Sony's first um, attempt at you know making a monitor 
I didn't really feel comfortable paying $900 for a monitor for a first gen um, product or whatever. Now, obviously, well, I'll leave that right there. So I looked for a comparable monitor that gives you a high refresh rate, but also has some HDR features and all of that so that I can actually use it while editing video and so on and so forth. Now I recognize this is a gaming monitor. This is not an accurate color display monitor for editing videos, but my I'm not Steven Spielberg either, so I'm not even worried about trying to be on that level. What this will do is give me the opportunity to um, this will give me the opportunity to be able to game, use both my PlayStation 5 and my Xbox Series X at the same station where I actually edit video, which basically means that this TV over here, if need be, can be allocated to somewhere else in the house or, um, you know, used for some other purposes. All right, and I could still switch it over if I wanted to play on a bigger screen on occasion. That's also an option. So... Without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and do an unboxing of this particular monitor. All right, let's go ahead and unbox this monitor. This is the, um, what would I call this? This is the LG Ultra Gear monitor. And I'll get the actual number. It's the 27 inch GP950. It's a 4K monitor with, um, reportedly one millisecond response it also has some hdr 600 nits of brightness it's got multiple ports for um you know display port it's got two 2.1 hdmi ports so it does support the newer uh consoles if that's what you have um i chose this over the sony because the Sony's a first generation device for um, that company, that type, you know, gaming monitor. And I didn't want to spend that premium and be disappointed. So I went with a company that um, has been making monitors for a while and it has similar features to that PlayStation monitor. The other thing is too, this is not just gonna be for, you know, like gaming type stuff. It's also gonna be um, my third monitor to my desktop setup. So let's go ahead, it's wrapped in this. Let's go ahead and just take this portion out. It's a nice uh, weighted monitor. Let's go ahead and get this out. And you've got your stand here. Or the base to the stand. And then this is the actual um, the actual arm of the stand. And then down here we've got a box full of goodies. So just going over those specs again. This is the Ultra Gear, the LG Ultra Gear Gaming Monitor, Nano IPS VESA Display HDR 600, 144 hertz one millisecond GTG sphere lighting. It supports the NVIDIA G-Sync. And it also supports, I believe, the um, AMD FreeSync. Uh, what else here? That's pretty much all it says here on the monitor. Let's go ahead and go through this little box and see what's inside. So opening this up. And obviously you have your power cord, uh, three prong at the ground. You have a display port cable. It comes with an HDMI uh, ultra high speed. It's ultra certified per the documentation. Got your power brick here. And then you also have a um, the kind of like a printer i can't remember all of the different uh acronyms for usb you got usb type a usb type c b whatever this is the printer version and it goes to a usb type a this may be usb type b 
So B to A, um, this plugs into your um, computer if you want like say the sounds and stuff to actually correlate with the RBG ring on the back of the device based upon my understanding. You got your directions and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way and let's try to get this uh, monitor unwrapped and fastened together. So we'll take the stand out first. You've got the NVIDIA G-Sync logo here. This is like a plastic. You've got yours. Okay, so it looks like it mounts toollessly on the bottom at least. So let's get that set up. Plug this in on the bottom and go ahead and screw these in. And this monitor does have the ability to use other Visa mounts so that you can actually mount it on the, um, you can mount it on the wall or on a different type of stand. Right here, it looks like you got some form of cable management maybe on the back. Red and black accents or red or black with red accents. And then let's go ahead and pull out the monitor and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the panel itself. And then just, let me move this to the side, just take a look at the back here. Zoom it in a little bit more. Okay, taking a look here. So you've got two USB, looks like 3.0s. You've got your power adapter. You've got your display port in and two uh, HDMI 2.1s and then you have your uh, I believe USB B and um, USB B connector there. On the bottom, you have a roll dial here and a basically a toggle switch to operate the monitor. I think the I'm not sure what the roll dial is for. I think it has to do with the RBG lighting. And then this is the Visa mount removal. Uh, portion there. So let's go ahead and put the monitor on the stand and then um, hook it up to the computer and see how it does. Probably shouldn't do this on the carpet, but just snaps into place. So the monitor, there we go. The monitor travels up and down. It does not tilt left to right, but it does rotate the, um, into portrait mode. And it only tilts to the uh, right it does not you know do a 360 thing there 
Um, what else? It does tilt down and up. And the monitor raises and lowers. If you look at the stand here, up and down. All right, let's get this up on the desk. I don't know how it's gonna fit. Because if you look here, I'm working with, with tight quarters. So I don't know if I should just move my PC over here or I may need to use, move my NAS device somewhere else. Let's see how this is gonna work out. First things first, we'll remove the scanner. And then we'll get rid of this. This one over here. Move the whole PC over there. I still have room to go this way and this way. I think this may work. Houston, we have a problem. Four 
throat tissues. So that's as low as that center monitor goes. All right, let's get the cables plugged in. So obviously we're gonna go with the display port. up and see how it does. All right, we're firing up. We'll see how everything looks. So 
So I don't know why, but basically with this um, actual um, workstation processor, it's always taken a while to actually boot up. I mean, it's just, you know, always been the thing. Could be some kind of a of a um, optimization thing that I missed or it could just be the processor, I don't know. But for the most part, I bought this processor, which is the 32 core 2990WX because I thought it was gonna last me a long time. Unfortunately, this is not one of the processors that is going to be able to be carried forward with um, Windows 11. So quite disappointed in that. All right, so we finally got it all fired up. Uh, let's pull this around here like this, maybe. And we've got our four, um, our three 4K monitors. And what we do also have, there, I can see that there's a different color um, by comparison. I have turned on the HDR um, component. So I'm just gonna see if this, you know, causes any issues, you know, in operation. So let me just pull up DaVinci Resolve real quick and see what it looks like. And then I'm able to do that. Let's go into full screen. See what it looks like. So I mean it looks all right you know I'm not um, my eye is not trained yet to see um, video um, in the way that maybe some, a professional would but the main thing for me is this is going to give me the ability to go ahead and connect um, you know to be able to operate you know audacity on one window um, affinity photo on another and then DaVinci Resolve so that I can, as I'm trying to make the videos um, for my channel, it's going to be a smoother workflow. So, and then the other caveat is that I'm able to, and I could pull out. my Xbox Series X and plug it into that monitor. here and plug it in. And then I can work my way over and grab this and pop this in. Right now I'm just gonna sit it right here next to Plug this one in as well. Got this camera, but I haven't hooked it up yet. Okay, so uh, that's not elegant at all, but you know, both of those are connected. And um, let's fire them up and see how they do when I um, turn. We'll go with the Series X first. Okay, so we're powered up here. Let's see what happens on the monitor over here. All right, so we're gonna go into the settings, input. All right. And 
as you see, so I have my PC still running here. And then, um, let's zoom this in a bit. Now I have my game here. Let's see if this is even on here. Looks good. All right, so now let's go ahead and switch over to the PlayStation. So first, let's go over here. Let's turn it on. And then let's come back over here. And let's switch it to I'm just going to reach under here, grab it, input. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video here. Thanks for taking time to watch my partial office reveal as well as the unboxing of my new monitor. I'm looking forward to making some changes to my office and updating it so you'll get more information about that in the future. This is gonna be in stages. I hope to combine what I'm doing down in the shop with what I'm doing in my office to kind of marry those things together. So we will see what that looks like in the near future. Um, Again, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in my next one.